He's going to share a story about teaching his nephew to surf. Please welcome David LaCours. Welcome. So when my nephew turned seven, I gave him surfing lessons. Surfing lessons with the best surf instructor that I know. And we began with dry land training, which meant I took his little four foot, 10 inch board, placed it on the chaise lounge, and showed him where to position his body, how to paddle, and pop up, and be ready to ride. And now he was struggling a little bit with footwork, and I said, Dylan, you've got to plant your feet. He looked at me like I was from Mars. I said, yeah, you know like how a plant has roots, and that gives it stability? And to add a level of authenticity, I ran around him with a squirt bottle, shooting him in the face with water so he could understand the spray of the ocean hitting him in the face. We took the next phase and put the board in the swimming pool. And I pushed the back of the board and he would pop up, but he was taking my advice too literally and he would just fall over because he was so rigid. And I said, Dylan, you've got to have like lower body rigidity for stability, but let your upper body sway kind of like a trunk of a palm tree, you know, doesn't break because it moves in the wind. And he said, Uncle David, you look like one of those gas station guys that's blown up and it looks ridiculous. <clears throat> and he was getting frustrated and he said, I can't do it. And I said, Dylan, with that attitude, you're right, because that which we believe we can achieve. And he says, Uncle David, cut the Tony Robbins crap. <laughs> So lesson one was complete, and then the next lesson was going to be the real deal, at the actual beach. So we, I pick him up, he answers the door in his full wetsuit. Zipped up, blonde hair, face red as a tomato because he's super hot. And, uh, and we pack all the boards and the, the gear into the car. And he's not heavy enough to sit in the front seat, so he has to sit in the back. And we're cruising along, and I look in the rearview mirror, and he's got his sunglasses on and he's got you know, the wind blowing in his hair, and his new favorite band is Pearl Jam, and he's rocking out. And he says, hey, Uncle David, did you know I'm naked under my wetsuit? <laughs> I didn't know that. He says, yeah, what are you gonna wear under your wetsuit? Because my mom says sometimes you wear bikini bottoms under your wetsuit. <laughs> and I said, dude, because that's how surfers talk, they're not bikini bottoms, it's called a Speedo. And he says, oh, like that's any better. So we, we get to the beach and we go down the ramp at Pipes and he shows me the secret shortcut and he always he has his wetsuit on so I'm pulling my wetsuit on and uh, he, he says, hey Uncle David, did you know there's two types of people in the world? Those that pee while wearing their wetsuit and those that lie about it. I said, Dylan, don't tell your mom that I told you that joke. And he said, why would I do that? She's the one that told it to me. So we get him ready, his leash is on, and we start swimming out to the surf. And the way we're gonna do this is I'm behind him, and when a big wave comes, I push the bottom of the board down and it pops him up and over the wave so we can get to the outside. And he gets to the outside and we spin him around, and I say, paddle, and he paddles super hard, and he doesn't know this, but I push the back of his board, and he catches the wave, and he rides it all the way to the beach which means I now have to swim all the way to the beach, which isn't a problem because he's having a great time and we do this again and again and he says, Uncle David, you're awesome. And I said, no, you're awesome. And he says, no, you're awesome. And we're having this little surf romance out in the water. And he's starting to get tired and, um, and then right then a big kind of rogue set wave comes and his eyes light up, my eyes light up a little bit too. And we look behind and there's no one behind him so he ditches his board and I grab his wrist and we dive under the wave. And when he comes up, he has this look of like, is he gonna cry or is he gonna shout with elation? And thank goodness he chose the latter. Yes! And he says, let's just body surf. And I said, all right, let's do that. So we take the board and we put it inside and we just would body surf like for the next half an hour. And so the sun's kind of going down and it's, it's getting later in the day and uh, we're getting really hungry. And so we pack the boards up and we do what surfers do, we go to Roberto's. And we have some, some dinner, I have a carne asada torta, he has a quesadilla. And we get home and we rinse off the surfboard and rinse out the wetsuits and uh, 
And that gives us an opportunity to rel relive every wave that we had caught that day. And of course, we, we enhanced them and they started to look a little bit more like this in our minds rather than how they actually were. And um, so we're all cleaned up and, and now we're waiting for uh, my sister, his mom, to come and pick him up. And we're chatting about how fun the day was. And finally my sister comes, and she knocks on the door and I let her in and, and she said, how did he do? And I said, he did so well, he totally ripped. And I said, you know, Dylan, I'm curious though, why do you think you did so much better in the ocean versus in the swimming pool? I don't know, he says. And then right then, my sister notices this house plant in my house. She said, yeah, you've had that thing for a long time. And I said, yeah, I've had that house plant for at least 15 years. And for 15 years, it always lived in this little wicker basket uh, pot. And I said, the cool thing is, is that just a month ago, I took it from this small little basket and I put it into this bigger basket, bigger pot. And for those 15 years, it just had these two gangly branches. But after I moved it to the bigger pot, about a month later, this new branch grew. And my nephew says, wait, wait, that's it. That's why I was so much better in the ocean than in the swimming pool. I just needed a bigger pot. <laughs> so there's a moral to this story. And it is this. There's two. First, a Speedo is not a bikini. <laughs> and second is this, if you want to experience growth, whether it's in your business, or in your life, or in your artwork, you've just got to put yourself into a bigger pot. Thank you, David, for the story.